In today's video, we're going to be exploring the creation of an MPG project from scratch. And MPG is a programmatic SEO tool that allows you to generate thousands of landing pages in seconds. All you need is a template and a source file. So we're going to be exploring this right now. So this is the source file that I'm using. It's called Laptop Prices, which is a data set from Kaggle.com. So we're going to be moving back and forth, referencing this data set throughout this video. So I'm going to start by creating the template. I'm going to click on new to add a new post. And instead of naming this as normal, I'm going to use MPG shortcodes. So here are the shortcodes and each of these will be replaced by the corresponding value from our source file. So for example, if I go back to the data set, we'll see the different headings I have here. We'll see company, product, and so on. So short codes will automatically be created from these headings. And I'm going to go ahead and paste the body of our template, which I already prepared using chat GPT. So all of the short codes you see in bold text will be replaced with values from our data set. So for example, this could read Apple offers an exceptional choice with the MacBook Pro, a sleek and powerful Ultrabook featuring a 13.3 inch display. So what it will do is take a look at the source file and replace each shortcode with the actual data. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and publish this and then we'll go ahead and start creating our project. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of this. Let's just go back to our posts and here I'm going to click on MPG. Let's add a new project. And here we can either choose a template or start from scratch. I'm going to start from scratch. Let's give our project a name. I'm going to call this one laptops. Under source type, we can either use a direct link or we can upload a file. We're going to use the direct link. It's the same spreadsheet that I showed you previously. I'm just going to click on this down arrow and I'll click on copy link. And we can go back to WordPress and we'll just paste it in this field. Okay, that's fine. Now we don't need to specify a worksheet since we only have one. The sync frequency will be set to live. And that's it for the source. We can just click on fetch and use. Okay, so we've just brought in all of our data and we can see a preview of this data here. We can also see that a short code has been assigned to each column in our spreadsheet. And this was all done in a matter of seconds, over 1200 entries. If you wanna sort through it, you can simply click on preview all data is this link right here in the bottom right. And now we have a list of all of our MPG data. You can search for anything you want. For example, I'm going to look for HP laptops and here it is, or maybe Dell. And that data is available to you right away for you to sort through. All right. So moving along to project settings, we can go ahead and set our entity type. Let's say we want to use posts. Next, we'll choose our template file. We're going to use the same one that we just created. So I'm going to search for MPG and it's right here. And of course you can go ahead and configure advanced settings. And I just want to ensure that our template is hidden from search results. But if you need to, you can always configure the other options. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the general tab and I think we're done with this. So we're going to move on to generate URLs. So this is our URL format template. We can see a preview of the URL at the bottom of our page. So we can basically use these short codes as building blocks for our URL structure. We can use this menu to find and insert a short code into our template. For example, let's say we wanted to have MPG company hyphen MPG product hyphen the size of the screen. We'll go with MPG inches. So now if we look at the URL, we'll see Apple MacBook Pro 13.3. We can keep the default separator and slash options. We'll click on publish. And just like that, we can generate over 1200 virtual SEO optimized pages. We can now access one of the URLs to see how one of these pages would look. And this one is actually a post, but you can always choose the entity that you want to create these for. So as we can see, the short codes were replaced with the correct values from our source file. We can also go ahead and tweak the category for the template. So I'm going to go back to all posts. I'm going to click on the template to edit it. And now all we need to do here is change the category for our post. Okay. So in addition to this, something else that we can do is incorporate an image into our template. For example, we can add an image block. And we'll use our media library to select any image. I think this one will be fine. We'll click on select. And once we can see the block, we'll click on these three dots and we'll click on edit with HTML. Now, once we can see the code, we'll need to find the line with the file name. It's actually this line. So I'm going to highlight the file name. It's MacBook Air 1024 by 682.jpg. And we need to replace this with an MPG shortcode that references, or we can say corresponds to a header in the source file that also corresponds to a list of image file names. So if we go all the way to the end, we'll see the image header and we have a list of file names right under. 
So the plugin will actually assign the shortcode mpg underscore image to this header. So as long as these files are present in your media library, the plugin will be able to display the images in their correct locations. So I'm going to go back to our template and I'll replace this file name with mpg underscore image. Okay, so that's it. Maybe now we can go back and see an example of this, but let's go ahead and save this first. Now we can go back or maybe we can view a sample URL and this may be random. Yes, it is. So we don't have an image for this Asus laptop, but hey, we can now see our category. Let's see if we can find a URL with an image. Let's go to one of our URLs. We'll use the first one. And now we have an image of our Apple laptop. Now these examples I'm showing you are still quite simple. It's really up to you and your imagination to cook up some complex layouts with these shortcodes. For this example, I was only able to add a few images, but in your case, you can always go ahead and provide an image for each of your entries or perhaps even multiple images. But like I mentioned, the beauty of this is all of these pages are virtual. They don't physically exist in your CMS at all. The result is an SEO friendly website, which does not compromise performance. Now let's take a look at some more project settings. We'll go to the shortcode tab and here we'll have an option to select the shortcode for any header, which can be displayed anywhere on our website. We can just click to copy and paste it anywhere. We can also generate a list of items using shortcodes. For example, we can display a list of ultra books. So I'm going to choose type name. We'll keep the operator as equals and our value will be ultra book. Now we'll keep our default logic option for now. The sorting is fine. We'll keep our limit as five and all of these parameters and values get compiled into a short code, which you can see right here. It's called the short code sandbox. So as you can see, all of the values are derived from the input fields above. We'll click on preview. We can now see a list of five different products based on the filter that we applied. I'm going to use this list on a page. So I'm going to click on copy expression. And that's basically a shortcut to copy the short code. We can also change the direction of sorting to random that will update the short code. And if we click on preview, we can now see a different list. So I'm going to click on copy expression and I'm going to paste this in a page on my website that I have prepared already. So we'll just paste the short code right below this text. I'm going to press enter and paste it. Okay. That's all there is to it. I'm going to click on save and now we can view the page to see our list. So here it is. And basically every time the page loads, a different list will appear since the sorting is random. However, all of the items on that list will belong to the ultra book category. So just imagine this could be your homepage within links to your MPG pages. I'm going to set this up right now. I'll go to settings, then reading, and I'm going to change the homepage displays from your latest post to a static page. I'll choose the page that I just showed you and click save changes. All right, we can go back. Now we can access any of these links from our homepage. And as we know, some of these have no images, but we can just refresh until we find an item with an image. So now we can jump back into our project to configure some additional settings. So we'll go ahead and generate a sitemap. And first we'll need to enter a file name. So I'm going to call it laptops. We'll also keep the max URLs at 50,000. You can also choose how frequently you'd like your sitemap to be generated. And there is an option as well to add it to your robots text file. Once you're done, click save and generate. Once it's done, you'll get a link to access your XML sitemap and here's how it looks. So MPG also has spin tag support, which can basically rearrange or rewrite or rephrase your content to make it more unique. If I click on spin, you'll see an example of this and you'll have the option to use the MPG spin tag shortcode in your projects. You'll find more information on this in MPG's documentation page or comment down below if you'd like us to cover this specific feature in a separate video. Now the final option is all the way down and this is basically an option to flush your cache. Like I mentioned, you can find more information in this documentation page. I'll be leaving a link in the description. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.